Hey, how you doing? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever I'm joining you from, LinkedIn, how are you doing? Oh, I'm shouting a bit because it's so windy down here. If you're not in the UK, then you don't know what you're missing. Actually, you might have winds in the other parts of the world, but um, there is a gale going on at the moment. Not as bad yesterday, we were on kind of red alert, but it's still, wasn't sure whether to go out today. But um, as always, in winds, it was a fantastic run, one direction. PB, but turning around, it, yeah. I think um, there was people pushing, well there was definitely a lot passing me. Um, but anyway, so uh, Matt Phillips here from One Chat Live, in case you've never seen me before. And um, this is my update on the sleep study I'm doing, um, using Cerebra Health Sleep System, which, um, if you haven't watched these videos before, is an in-home polysomnogram, uh, meaning that it measures uh, brain activity, it measures eye muscle activity, it measures other muscle activity like in um, uh, the chin or the neck and um, in doing so it's able to actually give um, uh, the polysomnogram results you'd normally only be able to get from going to a laboratory and sleeping somewhere that's not your own bed um, and somewhere that's not exactly where you feel at home literally. So I'll be very lucky to have a chance to uh, test it out being someone who has suffered from sleep problems all their life and um, to make it interesting um, the first week I'm on week or day 14 will be tonight so the first seven days I just continue my normal life drinking pretty much I don't know three coffees two co at least two coffees a day uh, double shots I think is the standard so a lot of coffee um, and then uh, yeah so I had a a study going on for a week doing that and then in week two which was a week ago I stopped drinking coffee so tonight will be the seventh day of no coffee and um, basically to see what effect caffeine has on me as an individual when I just take it out of my diet I'm trying to keep everything else constant so I'm decided I'm going to do three runs a week normally I do maybe four or maybe even two and just kind of vary it up and do kind of a 10 miler and a few 5k's and maybe how I feel basically is where my running is at the moment um, but in this uh, period these 35 days I wanted to keep that constant so that did have an effect on my on the sleep data that was sent to the wonderful people at Cerebra in Canada um, although today I must admit I did do five miles instead of my agreed 5k just because it was silly the way out was just pushing me all the way there so I decided I'll, I knew it was gonna be hard on the way back so I just thought yeah go out two and a half turn around come back against the wind um, I don't think it oh, I don't actually I feel pretty pretty well off it wasn't a difficult one considering how windy it is has that got anything to do with the caffeine I don't know who knows but the sleep data uh, will be interesting to see how it's affecting all the stages of my sleep because um, that's what this is all about it's all about um, started with a, an interview I did on the Sports Therapy Association podcast with the amazing um, Dr. Amy Bender um, who's the Director of Clinical Sleep at Cerebra um, and she was drawing our attention to the fact that a lot of the wearables which maybe people listening to this video use um, Fitbit and the hour ring and all the kind of things which are on the market if you do use them let me know by the way put them in the comments but they don't really give that accurate information to base serious decisions on to do with your performance or injury risk or or quality of life um, because they don't get the EEGs they don't get the muscle activity they can't really give you information or that good information on the actual sleep stages and what modern sleep science is understanding a little bit more now because it's still a bit of a mystery is that it's the stages of sleep it's the quality of sleep uh, it's the cycle from non-REM to REM every kind of 90 minutes during the night um, and the different um, uh, time you spend in each of those stages within your cycles and so on there's a lot to it but with the help of um, equipment like Cerebra have created um, then it's becoming more accessible which is why I'm very excited to be part of it anyway so how do I feel well it's tricky isn't it because I'm doing this after a run and I always feel pretty cool after a run or do I though maybe I'm conning myself because I think the last video I did I was pretty grumpy I was I was super irritable wasn't I um, I was irritable this morning but but that was for other reasons but I don't know it's so difficult to tell 
I'll tell you what I do know. Okay, concretes, which I have noticed after a week of no caffeine. Um, uh, my appetite's gone up. That's definite. Um, and uh, I'm swigging down milk, which I stopped a while ago, which I see as a good sign. Um, I like that. Um, I'm grabbing... Uh, I was going to say grabbing my nuts, but that's kind of not what I wanted to say. I wanted to say I'm grabbing my little pot of nuts that I've got next to the bread bin, which is a nice constant source of calories and protein. Um, and I'm making myself more food. I'm, I'm spending a bit more time making decent food rather than just going for a cake or chocolate was my big energy booster. I've also been limiting chocolate. It's... It's, it's amazing isn't it it's like as soon as you make a little change or you have a little bit of a commitment or you're accountable that's the big thing as soon as you're a bit accountable for what you're doing during the day then you start it's a cycle isn't it of success i think um, and that's i think that's what's happening a little bit to me i mean i am getting to bed by 10 30 every night did that happen before no way i had one actually i had one night a few nights ago i was up to one where the devil came back and hit me and i was on my laptop till one changing headers on websites and things but so I think, I don't know, I, I think the caffeine being taken out has had a positive effect on my diet. Um, and, and that's got to have a positive effect, a knock-on effect on loads of stuff, hasn't it? Um, and maybe that's where the whole link with performance comes from as soon as you start improving one thing. But anyway, just want to have a quick shite out, shout, shite, just having a quick shite. Now I want to have a quick shout out to Mike James, who just said, hello, hi pal, watching you, watching you on my run. Hello mate, how are you? Um, I'm sure you're this probably the same as where I am at the moment, isn't it, Mike? If you're in Wales running around, it's just very fine rain here, but consistently annoying and very windy. I'm tucked in the corner here between stone and stone. Uh, just so I've got wind, but um, yeah, hope you're well, mate. Um, we'll have to catch up again soon. It's so nice seeing you face to face at Therapy um, Expo. Um, I hope we can do that again soon. Um, so yeah, there you go, people. So boom, boom, boom. What have I got to tell you? Um, if you are listening, then I wanted to shout out um, the fact that this month on Sports Therapy Association, it's all about women's health. I'm really excited by the last three episodes we've had, uh, bringing awareness to um, the subject of women's health, the taboos, the the lack of information. Um, the last episode we had was on Tuesday, which is now available on YouTube and on all popular podcast apps. Um, it was called Two Mats and a Woman, and it was myself and Matt Scarsbrook and a woman called Katie, um, one of Matt's friends who is a non-therapist, which is what we wanted to come in and chat about women's health, basically, and kind of highlight. We ended up highlighting not just the lack of information that men know, um, it was more a case of the lack of information out there, the lack of education, the fact that it was highlighted that GPs, we were told by somebody um, this who came to watch us live, Sarah Jones, uh, who tells some good authority that GPs is an, op- is an option in their studies um, at university to, uh, to, to study menopause. Uh, do you fancy doing menopause or do you want to do something else, you know? Which is not surprising, therefore, that menopause is a topic that um, not even women know about until it hits them. And by then, it's kind of a shock um, and can be very debilitating. So it's not surprising that any healthcare professional um, who is visited by a woman suffering from symptoms of menopause or early menopause doesn't know what to do. Never really talked about it, whether you're female or male. So I encourage everybody, if you can, male or female, to go and have a listen because it's you know what it's not just for soft tissue therapists it's for any it's for humans okay the sports therapy association podcast is for humans it's for especially the last three episodes because um women's health is is a central part of life isn't it without getting too deep um it's where we come from we come from women um so um and with a population which is or slightly more women than men um, evolution has made sure that happens just in case of any accidents or wars and things we need to look after the women um, and we need to be aware of the women it sounds ridiculous having to say it isn't it um, and up till now and still um, our healthcare system which is what we were focusing on in the episode has been made by men for men research into pretty much anything when we talked Matt Scarsbrook has some fantastic information as always thank you Matt Scarsbrook 
about research which classically just uses male populations and misses out not just the benefits for women um, or information rather which uh, could benefit women but also misses out information which could benefit men as well because you are missing out uh, Matt identified that there was certain studies which showed that female cells react differently than male cells um, and if you only test stuff on male cells or animal cells then you're missing out all sorts of possibilities of fantastic um, uh, results um, in the health industry which could help a lot of people but if you're not using women in your studies um, then you're never going to find them so um, there's some really good eye openers and, uh, and it was a good laugh I mean let's face it the three of us had a good laugh um, so hopefully it should be easy listening for you uh, right that's it I want to keep this under 10 minutes because it's freezing basically I can't feel my hand anymore um, this Tuesday uh, just to finish off we are finishing our month of women's health um, as always on Tuesday 8 o'clock on YouTube we only stream out live to YouTube now it's recorded there and then we upload it as a podcast I say we like there's a lot of us it's only me um, who's doing the podcast uploading it rather so yeah this Tuesday come in at 8 o'clock on YouTube um, join us for Athletic Female with Gron uh, Gronia Donnelly Emma Brockwell and Dr Helen McElroy who's going to be joining us talking on us all about the female athlete um, and their course coming up um, which is directed to uh, therapists and healthcare professionals who really want to look after um, women and ath uh, female athletes. So, yeah, whoever you are, have a listen. I, know, I really don't think it's for soft tissue therapists anymore. I think it's a podcast for anybody who just wants to know about health and feeling better. Right, take care, everyone. Um, I hope you're well. If you are going out running today, be careful. Yesterday was a nightmare in the UK and the South Coast with things flying around. Um, be careful if you do go out. I've been out between, I ran from Lansing to Shoreham, and back again and then it's fine uh, but do, do keep your eyes open especially when you're passing gardens with trampolines right take care and um, speak to you soon bye bye